afternoon, everyone. The mayor is now connected for our afternoon press conference this Friday. Hope everyone is doing okay. Uh, the mayor will first speak in English and then we'll take questions in English and then he'll speak in Spanish and we'll take questions in Spanish. And I uh, want to say this time around, we're gonna start with one question for each reporter and, and then we'll move on to Spanish and do one question and then if we have additional time at the end, we'll come back for follow-ups. If that's okay with everyone. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Thank you, Patty. Good, after <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for joining me today. And uh, joining me today are several of the county's medical experts from Jackson Health and U Health, including Dr. Lillian Abo, Dr. Tanira Ferreira, and Dr. Eileen Marty from FIU's Medical School. Also here from the Florida Department of Health are Dr. Yesenia Villalta and Dr. Samir Elmir. These experts and others have been guiding us every step of the way as we started to open up uh, the economy under our new normal rules. As you know, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties I've seen a recent, a recent uptick in COVID-19 cases. That was frankly to be expected as we have started to open up our economies and we're doing a lot more testing for the virus. We know this pandemic has no borders. It uh, takes a united front to beat this virus and save lives. And that's what our focus is now, tougher enforcement of the new normal rules that require masks and social distancing. I was part, uh, it was part of our discussion today with Governor Ron DeSantis and ACA Secretary uh, Mary Mayhew uh, during a roundtable at FIU. We're joined by Jackson CEO Carlos Migoya and the CEOs from Broward Memorial Health and Tenet Healthcare in Palm Beach. As the three counties have started to get people back to work, we're seeing too many people not wearing masks and not social distancing while out and about. We're also seeing a higher percentage of younger people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who are testing positive for the virus. And, you know, they may not have any symptoms, but they are contagious and they can be putting their parents and grandparents at greater risk because we know that the vast majority of COVID-19 deaths are people over the age of 65. So if people want to ignore our life-saving rules and not wear masks and not social distance, then we will offer them a wake-up call, tougher enforcement. Yesterday, Miami-Dade Police checked nearly 12,000 businesses, mostly in unincorporated areas of the county. They found only 19 businesses not in compliance. That's a very good rate. But we know that there are many more businesses not enforcing the rules. Some of them are in various cities. Miami-Dade Police Director Freddie Ramirez had a conference call today with municipal police chiefs to go over the county's zero tolerance enforcement strategy to protect public health. I had a virtual meeting with the League of Cities earlier this week. They agreed that the rules need to be enforced and that there have to be consequences. Again, we need a united front to tamp down the virus and to save lives. One of our officers come into your business and see people aren't wearing masks or practicing social distancing when they should, they will and probably will shut you down. I'm signing an emergency order tonight that would require violators to file an affidavit with the county indicating they have reviewed and understand the new normal guidelines and have come into compliance so that they can reopen. Non-compliant businesses may face a $500 fine and up to 180 days in jail. That's because it's a sec second degree misdemeanor. Everyone should take this seriously. We can't continue to open up the economy if people starting start acting like the virus is gone. It's not. Obviously, it's still here and spreading. So if you see a business that's not following the rules, call 305-4-POLICE. That's 305, the number four, and then police. And we will check on that business. But even more important, take personal responsibility. We all know what's expected. Wash your hands, wear, wear your mask, keep your distance. That's the only way to make sure the infection rate goes down. I do, um, I do want to stress that we have plenty of hospital beds, ICU beds, and ventilators available throughout the county. There have been some reports suggesting that we're running out of beds. That's simply not true. Check the daily dashboard on miamiade.gov slash new normal for the latest numbers. Also, we have never lifted the county safer at home order. So if you don't need to be out, especially if you have a health condition or if you're over 60, and that, that puts you at risk of severe illness from COVID-19, Stay home as much as you can. I'll now take uh, some questions in English and then I'll say a few words in Spanish and take those questions. Our doctors here are also here to answer any questions. So Patty, um, what do you got? Mr. Mayor, we'll start off today with Andy Slater from Fox Sports Radio. How come Andy always gets number one slot? Is he the first? He doesn't always. He doesn't not, always. Not, all, not always. <laughs> it starts with Mayor, an A. My, all right. I'm, all right. 
You, you didn't have, you haven't paid Patty off or anything, have you, Andy? Uh, I, I I have not, not at all, sir. Okay, all right, good. All you're right. you're you're sure. doing a lot. You're doing a lot more of these news conferences and, and talking to people more over the last few days, and you stressed today and earlier today as well that you really focused in on the hospitalizations and there's a lot of beds still open. So my question is, are you doing this more now because you are concerned about the cases going up, even though there's hospital hospitalizations are steady and there's a lot of beds open or is it more about there's fear out there and you know big case numbers and you want to get the message across it's probably because i'm a firefighter at heart and firefighters are about prevention and so i'd rather not be reactive i'd rather be preventive i've seen some of the numbers on the percentage of the tests uh, that are going up there has been a slight uptick in hospital hospitalizations and so I need to uh, you know Kind of nip this in the bud um, and not wait uh, much further. So, the message uh, has is that uh, we will be enforcing uh, stricter. That we expect you to wear your mask. That we expect you to keep social distance. That you know, hopefully, you will follow our rules. And if we do that, then we should keep uh, the infection rate low, and uh, we can then move forward with opening up more of the economy. But right now, we're going to kind of take a pause on on any more openings. And uh, and really focus in on enforcement, but that's been the message really, and it's uh, probably the firefighter in me that uh, wants to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. Thank you, sir. Our next question will be from Doug Hanks from the Miami Herald. Thank you so much. Um, so, Mayor, you had said that you had wanted a thousand contact tracers in Miami Dade County. Uh, what what's happened with that, and would that help bring down the infection rate right now? We're working uh, with, uh, again, we're working with the, with the state on trying to get more contact tracers and Miami-Dade County will, will help them. They've, they've, actually, the state has hired a company to help them with that. So we need to get the number of those um, additional personnel that the state has hired. How many are going to come down to Miami-Dade? How many are really needed here in Miami-Dade? And we will be glad to make up the difference. But I've got, uh, you know, one of my deputy uh, my deputy uh, directors is working directly with the state on that issue. I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that Dr. Vialta is on, on, the, uh, on this call, so maybe she can answer that too. Let me check and see if I find her. Dr. Vialta? Yeah, she's, she's here. Yeah, she's here. I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to unmute myself. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, we're working closely with the state and with uh, the county to be able to identify additional contact tracers um, to augment the support that we have at the local level. Um, so definitely that is something that we're looking at. Um, obviously, our um, epidemiology uh, folks uh, within the Department of Health continue to reach out and uh, contact trace, um, close and investigate all of our cases that are coming in. I don't understand. Like the county says it's willing to hire people. Like what is the holdup for getting more contact tracers? They're available. It's just going through, um, you know, having the, the, the agreements in place and be able to hire. Um, but we're in the process of working not only um, with, the, with the county, but also the state has hired um, and contracted with uh, Maximus um, to be able to uh, have additional contract tracers. So the work is being done. Uh, okay. I'm not following why the county can't help. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank we, you. We are, are, are going to help. Uh, and, and we're... We're working with the state to, to resolve any issues and then come up with an MIU and, and hire additional personnel. So we're working with the state to get that done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Next up from WLRN, Veronica Zaragovia. Hi, thank you. Mayor Jimenez, just also back on with the contact, contact tracers. So we were curious if they need to have a certain background in public health or these are people who can complete a program uh, like Miami Dade College is offering, and then they could um, help, you know, join the rings. Okay, since so I'm, that's not my my area of expertise. What the requirements are, I'm going to allow Dr. Vialta again to to answer that question. 
Sure. Uh, for the most part, the individuals that um, are hired um, through the Department of Health, they do have a background in contact, um, in public health. Um, we're working with um, the University of Florida International University to be able to um, identify uh, students who have um, are specializing in the background of public health. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have uh, from Newsy, Stephanie Liebergen. Not sure if she had a question. Stephanie, are you there? And did you have a question? Not at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Then let's move on to NBC6. Allison Hyman. Hi. So just going back to the enforcement side of things. Can you talk to a little bit of what you guys are finding in when businesses are in violation? Is it just for mask requirements? Are there other violations that you're seeing? And how are you going to continue to crack down? Is this going to be a daily random check-in? Um, and are other municipality police departments agreeing that they're going to do this, say, in the city of Miami or in the city of Coral Gables, stuff like that? Um, the uh, director for Miami-Dade Police uh, had a conference call today uh, with the um, the different chiefs from uh, from different municipalities. I don't know who, who agreed to it. I know yesterday when I spoke to the League of Cities, they agreed to it. I believe they're having a news conference on Monday, probably outside of uh, Miami City Hall to discuss what the cities are gonna do with enforcement. They understand the importance of enforcement. So I'd expect that all the cities uh, are going to be lending us a hand, at least in their just jurisdiction to uh, to go ahead and enforce these rules. Miami-Dade Police will also be going into cities if we get reports of non-compliance non because Miami-Dade Police has jurisdiction everywhere also. So um, it'll be a combination of, uh, of the municipal police departments, uh, municipal um, inspectors, county inspectors, county police. We're all gonna be you know, um, working on the enforcement aspect. What the, the 19 or so uh, businesses yesterday that did not weren't complying, I can't tell you exactly what it was that they did that was not compliant, but um, you know it could be you're not maintaining social distancing, you're allowing people to come in without masks, those kind of things. Uh, you're allowing too many people in a, in a certain area. You're allowing people to congregate. Um, that you know those could be violations. And again, we don't you know we don't want to be bad about it, but this is gonna it's gonna be it's tougher enforcement now. Uh, the businesses have been open long enough to know exactly what's required of them. And so we expect them to comply. It also is a way to give businesses some teeth because we also are hearing reports that people are refusing to wear the mask. Um, customers are refusing to wear the mask. And this will allow those businesses to basically escort those people out. Okay. And, uh, and so because we're going to hold the businesses responsible. Can I, can I ask a quick follow-up question? So just to be clear, those 19 businesses that were found in violation, were they automatically forced to close down and they're going to have to go through that affidavit process? Is that what happened to those businesses yesterday? I don't have the answer to that question. I will talk to my, my director uh, and see exactly what happened. Look, if it's just one person not wearing a mask, we're not going to close the business down for that. Okay. But if you see it, you know, a, a rampant violations, then, you know, that's why we, we're going to give our police officers discretion on how they handle the situation, but we are going to be tougher than we were in the past. Thank you, Mayor. I see Ty Russell from CBS4 is on the Zoom call. Ty, did you have a question for Mayor Jimenez? Yes, I do. How long would that process take, Mayor, when it comes to a business shutting down and then reopening under the new order that you'll sign tonight? Uh, for instance, if a business is shut down, let's say tomorrow morning, when will they be able to sign that affidavit and promise that they will uh, correct their issues and reopen? How long would that process take? I think it's going to take a minimum of 24 hours. So uh, that business will be open, will be closed that day. And then hopefully they'll sign that and uh, hand it over and then we will approve them going back and, uh, and opening up again. It's not going to be a simple, I promise, and you're, and you're open in five minutes. It's going to be longer than that. Thank you, sir. I see uh, that uh, Local 10 and WSBN are on. Do either of the, those stations have a question? Okay, I think we're done with English for now, so we can move on to Spanish. Oh, I hear somebody coming up. Uh, can I ask a quick question for WLRN? Um, Mayor, I'm wondering that even if there might not be, say, a crisis with the number of ICU beds available, but hospitalization numbers in Miami-Dade, 
are up. And I'm wondering if there's a way, if there's an, what's driving these numbers to increase? Um, not quite sure. So the numbers aren't up dramatically. They're, they're, you know, we've been hovering around 600 now. It's about 649, the COVID-19 patients in the, in the hospital today. And a hundred and something like 20 are in, are in ICU beds. Again, that's not very dramatically higher than, than, than the normal. We, uh, and there may be a number of things. We do have a higher percentage uh, of people that are testing that are coming up positive. Even though today's number dipped down to about 10%, which had been 14, 13, now down to 10, <clears throat> hopefully that trend continues and maybe we just had a blip. Uh, but we also understand that there are a number of people that are in the hospital for some other reason that came in negative and then tested positive in the hospital. That flips over to a COVID-19 patient. <clears throat> we got to get more information on that. So look, as we see, if we saw, uh, like we did, we've seen some numbers kind of creeping up. We want to make sure that uh, we just stop this now, and that if it's if it's because there's lax enforcement or because people are not taking these thing, the uh, our measures seriously, we need to you know enforce enforce it and make sure that we reiterate it. Especially this weekend, we, this weekend is Father's Day, and so we know we expect that a lot of you know families are going to get together with their with their fathers or grandfathers, and if they if those folks if those families don't live together in the same household. They need to maintain social distancing. They need, if they're inside, they need to have masks. You know, that's why we are asking uh, Father's Day celebrations as much as possible. Hopefully, hopefully the weather holds up. Uh, be held outdoors, you know, on a patio, in a park, maybe in a beach, all right, where, where it's, um, it's a much safer environment. But also keep your social distance and wearing masks if you're not from the same household. But uh, I think that's also a, a reason why we are emphasizing this this weekend and before this weekend because we know that it's Father's Day coming up and we expect a lot of people, a lot of families to be together this week. Thank you, Mayor. Do the doctors want to weigh in on the issue of the uptick in cases? I was just wondering if that means that some of the beds that were set up, let's say like at the Miami Beach Convention Center, have some of these facilities closed because there's not a, a need maybe for all of those beds? They, we, we set up two facilities, one at FIU and one at the Miami Beach Convention Center. The one at FIU was closed. Uh, the one at the Miami Beach Convention Center is still open. And then uh, the governor uh, announced today that there is going to the Pan American Hospital, the old Pan American Hospital, is going to be opening up 120 beds for, for the people, for those patients that come from nursing homes. Instead of having to send them back to nursing homes, they can go to, uh, to Pan American uh, and get, you know, a better level of care. So that'll add another, add another 120 beds to the inventory. So we did close one down one facility because it was never used. The facility at, the, at the, the convention center has never been used also, but it's still open. Thank you very much.